Okay, so we're going to look at another example of a binomial distribution. Um, pull it up here. I decide to give a multiple choice test with 10 questions. Each question has four possible answers, but only one correct answer. To pass the test, you must get at least seven questions correct. What is the probability a student who guesses on all 10 questions passes the test? What score would you expect a student to get on this test by guessing? So again, you know, it doesn't say anywhere in the problem that it's a binomial distribution, but if we don't identify it as such, we, we won't be able to answer the problem. So, you know, the, the idea is that because there's 10 questions, so that's the fixed number of choices, um, the 10 questions is our number of trials, and each trial has two possible outcomes. Either you're gonna get, you're gonna guess correctly, or you're gonna guess incorrectly. So that is what sets it up as a binomial distribution. And we have to sort of show that it is a binomial distribution by satisfying these things. And usually what I will do probably on the test is I'll have some form of short answer thing where you fill in these blanks for me to, to identify that you successfully um, shown that it is a binomial distribution. So in this case, N, the number of trials, there are 10 questions on the test. That's the number of trials. A success, well, success is that you got the question, the student got the question correct. So success is a correct answer. Sometimes it's good right here to figure out what the failure is. Failure would be an incorrect answer. Probability of success. So sometimes this gets confused, but each question has four possible answers. So chances of guessing correctly is one out of four or 25%. The chances of guessing incorrectly would be 75%. And again, those have to add up to a total of one. And then each problem is independent. So we just state that and then identify what X is, explicitly say what X is. X is gonna be the number of questions we got correct out of the 10. Um, it's important to identify what X is because that will help us answer the, the actual question, the probability question in the problem. So I'm just going to summarize that on this page. Um, again, N is 10, two possible outcomes, success and failure. Um, you know, here success is a, pro a, a positive thing. Success doesn't have to be a positive thing. Um, if our problem involved, you know, patients getting cancer and we, and we knew what percentage of patients got cancer, then a probability, then a success could be that the patient got cancer. Um, so you, you can't always assume that the positive value is a success. The success is usually determined by whatever the thing you're being told in the problem or that you're looking for. Here, we're looking for correct answers. So those correct answers are telling us that's a success. Okay, so again, just summarizing that and identifying what X is. And then that establishes that we have a binomial distribution um, which allows us to say, okay, it's binomial where n is 10 and the probability of success is 0 0.25. And then we can start looking at, okay, what's this question asking us to find? So this question says, to pass the test, you must get at least seven correct. And then what is the probability a student who guesses on all 10 questions passes the test? So down here, um, the probability that they pass the test is the probability that x is at least seven. And we want to think about what at least seven means. So the thing is, do you want to include seven or not? So seven is included in at least seven. So it would be seven, eight, nine, or 10. They would have to get seven, eight, nine, or 10 questions correct, or that's the probability that X is greater than or equal to seven. Um, here's where I would jump over to Excel and I'll do that here. I set up my table already. So the values that X can take on, I have to put those in correctly or I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. So I just started with zero and then I went down to one. And if you want to continue that pattern, you can grab zero and one and just drag them down to 10. So my choices for X, they're either going to get zero correct, one correct, two correct, or all the way up to 10 correct. 
the probabilities we set up by using binomial distribution. I'll get all cap lock binomial dot distribution. There it is. And then it's telling me here what it wants. So the number of successes, that's the previous cell. So uh, go up here, A2, comma, number of trials, that's 10. The probability of success, just did number of trials, now I'm doing probability of success. That's the chance I get each question correct. That's 25% per question. And then cumulative, I want to go with false. So I just, if I can type F and then double click on false, it'll fill it in for me. Tab out of there. And I'm going to drag that down. And you'll notice at the bottom here, these are in scientific notation. Um, the probability I get nine right is very small. It's 2.86 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that means we would move the decimal five spots to the left. Um, we could leave it like this. We could also sort of take all these values and round them to four decimal places. There they are. And you'll notice the nine and the 10 spots essentially are zero. And you'll see that on, um, in WAMAP with a zero with a little plus after it. Um, to represent essentially zero, but it's not really zero. It's really, you know, 0 0.0000029, but to four decimal places, it's zero. Okay, and then there's our table. And going back to our original problem, we want the probability that X is at least seven. So that's going to be represented by seven, eight, nine, and 10, these four probabilities. So I, I, I wanna be careful not to say, oh, that's just 0 0.0035 if I manually add these up. Because of the rounding, it could be 0 0.0035 or there could be a slight little bit extra, nope. So it's still to four decimal places, it's 0 0.0035. So going back over here. Rid of Excel here. There we go. We see that the probability x is at least seven is 0 0.0035. And again, four decimal places works. I left my table here with many decimal places so we could see the rounding happening. Okay, so that part of the question is done. And then the next part of the question, I just moved it down on my page. It says, what score would you expect a student to get on this test by guessing? By the way, so the probability they're gonna pass is very, very small. <laughs> by guessing, right? That's less than one, per, less than half of 1%. Um, what score would you expect a student to get on this test by guessing? So that's an expected value problem. When we say expect, we're looking for the expected value. And with the probability distribution, the expected value and the mean are the same thing. And we can always find it by multiplying x times the probability of x and then adding that third column up. But because we're in a binomial distribution, that's gonna be equivalent to taking n times p. So the mean mu is the same as n times p, n is 10, p is 0 0.25, multiply them together, it's 2.5, and then it's 2.5 questions, because that's the, the, how many would, would we expect them to get correct by guessing, two and a half questions. And then just to recap this whole problem, um, we first had to establish that it was a binomial distribution, with the value of n being 10, probability of success being 0 0.25. Then there was a little bit of work to figure out what a passing score meant. X is at least seven, or X is greater than or equal to seven. Then I used my table in Excel and I added those last four rows of probabilities. Um, be careful on the rounding. So I noticed I actually didn't round it till after I was done. I let Excel do the rounding for me. 0 0.0035, um, and then what score would you expect a student to get? That's asking about the mean, which for a binomial is n times p, 10 times 0.25, 2.5 questions. Okay, so that'll do it for binomial distributions. Um, and I think that pretty much covers chapter four. I, I didn't do, well, I'll, I'll talk about other stuff later, okay.